Hello all you lovely people and welcome to my very first video of 2024 and before I start this video I would like to wish you and yours a happy new year. I hope your new year is filled with joy, prosperity, happiness, laughter and um, as we head into 2024 I uh, just want to give you a little bit of an information before I start this video. Why? Because uh, I started a new gaming channel and there's a reason why I started a new gaming channel is because my main channel where you're watching this video or you might even be watching this on my main gaming channel no, my new gaming channel now is because um, hey when I started my main channel which is called Babith Singh I wanted to make a lot of gaming and tech content but I wanted to make it in English but I also ended up making a lot of videos in Hindi now why am I giving you this information is because when my English viewers still come on my channel and when they watch videos in Hindi they might just exit and go watch some other videos because uh, uh, hey, it's kind of a bounce rate which works against the whole YouTube algorithm thing and it works against my channel. That's why my channel's performance has been affected. The reason why I decided to start a new gaming channel is because I wanted to put out content only in English there. So my new gaming channel will have content in English language only and this channel of mine will have content in both Hindi and English. So if you want English content only, you're better off watching my new gaming channel. I'm going to put the link of that channel in the description box. Just, just click on it and you can just head over there and watch the same video there. Why am I putting the same video on both channels? Uh, it's only a temporary thing because I want to have my um, viewers who have been, you could say, uh, faithfully following my channel to stay updated with what's happening with gaming. At the same time, I want to redirect them to my new gaming channel because um, they can expect that content there. Over a period of time, what I'll start doing is, I'll start changing the content on this channel so that it has more tech content and that too in Hindi and ultimately all my English content, all my English gaming content will ultimately be on that channel. So my performance might take a hit. That's where I need your help and support. Uh, so if you are new to this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button on both my channels if you're into Hindi and English content. And if you're into English content only, just head over to my gaming channel and like and subscribe to my new gaming channel. Now with that said, we're going to talk about one of the games that I played in 2023. And I was very surprised that this game did not do as well as it should have. Now, which game am I talking about? Because there were a plethora of games which released in 2023. Now, late in 2023, which was the last quarter, we had a game called Immortals of Avium. Now, this was developed by Ascendant Studios and it was published by EA, a very, very well-known, you could say, publishing studio. The game, however, did not do that well. So, in this video, I'm going to give you my personal opinion as I play some of the gameplay footage that I've recorded through my PC game time. I'm going to give you my personal opinion as to what I feel about the game and why I think this game might not have done as well as it should have. But at the same time, let me also tell you that right at the start of this video, I will tell you that I think that this game deserved more love than what it received. So with that said, let's take a deep dive into what my experience with the, with the game has been. And I'm going to talk for, say, about almost 20 minutes after this and um, yeah let's get right into it guys all right now let me switch over my camera and um, let's get some gameplay going in the background and i'm going to give my commentary and my personal opinion as to why i believe this game did not do as well as it should have uh, so i'm just gonna take a look at the footage here and just comment on top of it that's exactly what this video is all going to be about now the exact number of copies that uh, immortals of avium soul remains uh, officially you could say unrevealed so we don't know how much did it sell but we know that well the developers definitely laid people off after the game was released almost just after a month so something must have gone wrong there now the reviews for the game were i would say mixed uh, there were some technical issues to begin with there was poor optimization and uninspired gameplay as well, as a lot of critics called it. Now, the optimization could be an issue 
in the beginning because this was one of the first few games that came out with Unreal Engine 5 and uh, that may have contributed to these optimization issues. Now, while I was playing this game, I was playing it on my laptop and uh, just to give you an idea as to what specs I was running this on, then it was my Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition from 2021, which has 32 gigs of RAM. It has the RX 6800M, which is a 12 GB dedicated graphics card. So it's, it's, it's definitely a machine which is more suited for 1440p gaming. And that's exactly what I was playing this game on. I couldn't play this on 4K, by the way. It was just unplayable on 4K. Now, we don't exactly know, at least I don't exactly know, how many people Ascendant Studios laid off. Now, some news articles say it was 40 people. Some news articles say it is 45%. Well, it could be that, you know, they had 100 developers and 40 were laid off. So it's somewhere between 40 to 45%, but I don't exactly have that number. Now, again, you know, like I said, while I don't know exactly how well it did or how, you know, how many numbers it may have sold, um, I don't have that number. So I don't exactly know, but there's definitely something here. And that's why I'm making this video, by the way. Now, one of the reasons that I can just immediately talk about while I'm showing this gameplay footage in the background is that while you had this world that you could look at i mean the world is gorgeous guys i mean it's beautifully designed but the problem was nothing is interactive like i'll just give you an example i love the assassin's creed franchise and even when you are walking in the streets like when you are uh, mixing around with people you can just push people around and they react to it they will say something at least you know when you bump into them and here, nothing happens. If you bump into them, you just stop. That's it. The items in the background, like those fruit trays, etc., bottles, nothing can be interacted with. So although you have crafted this beautifully designed world, and just look at it, the backgrounds, the atmosphere, the costumes, the level design, it's phenomenal, guys. But one of the biggest letdowns is that you can see all of it, but you don't get that immersiveness because you don't have that reaction. <laughs> Unlike, you know, these games that I've spoken about, like the Assassin's Creed franchise, where you can break things, where you can push people, shove them around, and they will react to it. There is this natural reaction to it. So that increases the level of immersion, which was clearly missing here. Now, these are just my personal uh, opinions on this game. Now, a lot of people also called... Um, this game out for the lack of originality now let me just give you some context here if you closely look at the gameplay you will notice that a game came out just a few months back which resembled this game now which game am i talking about ghostwire tokyo very similar the same arm moments the same you could say doctor strange kind of uh, things that you make from your hand and that was also an fps so it's coming right after that. So a lot of people might be calling it out for being unoriginal, you could say. Then there is the um, repetitive combat. Uh, now, I have to mention this quick thing here. And I think this is very important because a lot of people need to know this information. Now, while I was playing this game, I was using Plitch. Now, Plitch, by the way, is uh, a cheat engine and you can use it with any of your PC games. Why was I using Plitch? Well, I quickly wanted to go through the story. That's what I wanted to do. Now, a lot of people are against it, but a lot of people are for it as well. And that's exactly why a platform like Plitch exists. So I wanted to take advantage of that. And I was playing this with Plitch attached to it, meaning, you know, running in the background with the cheats. Uh, but I also played it without the cheats, just so you know, because the first time I played this game, I played this on my EA Play Pro subscription. And then I just sat on it <laughs> because, um, again, you know, the combat was repetitive. The tutorial was so long. It was boring. Now, if you want to do a tutorial, which is interesting, do it like Spider-Man 2. I mean, if you haven't noticed already, the fight with the Sandman, it's a glorified tutorial. 
that's how you do tutorials but in this case i found it really really boring and that may have really pushed me off in the beginning so like i said i started playing this off on my ea play pro subscription and i did not do anything with this game for almost three months and i again picked it up late december and that's why i am able to you know give you my you could say my opinion about it after having played this again and when i was playing this again i bought it off steam oh, sorry i bought it off epic not steam now the reason why steam came off my mouth is because you are better off buying this on steam and not on epic games because when i played this on my ea play pro i did not have any controller issue now if you are playing this game using a controller don't buy it on uh, epic game store just buy it either on the ea play pro subscription and play it or buy it on steam because while i was playing this through my epic games the controller was all over the place first of all if i would move my right trigger uh sorry not right trigger right stick then yeah it does pan the camera but there's this weird control glitch that's happening i don't know if you would be able to pick it up in this video or not the other thing was there was a drift happening in my controller now my controller has no issues i played so many games now with that controller and even after this i've played other games as well <laughs> while i was playing these games through steam no issues at all in fact even the other games that i've purchased from epic game store i did not have those control issues that i had on this particular game now if you have already purchased this on epic game store and if you have also experienced what i'm talking about then please let me know in the comment section so that i know that i'm not the only one who's facing this problem so these were some of the technical issues the technical challenges you could say the optimization issues that i've spoken about the campaign story although i've not completed it i'm close to completing it by the way and i think i have a fair idea as to how this goes how this works and uh, without giving away too many spoilers i'll just be very brief about it the story itself is short <laughs> and sweet so the playtime is not that great uh, because some people if you're looking for hundreds of hours of gameplay like with the assassin's creed franchise or with games like skyrim or with rpgs this is not that game so the playtime is really short. The main story is brief. And I think even the timing of this game when it came out, and this could have been an issue. The timing of this game was off because it came out at a time when we had games like the Ghostwire Tokyo, which had come out a few months back. And you had so many games releasing in that time. And I think that took away from what this game could have done in terms of the sales numbers because there were a lot of games which came out especially in the last quarter of 2023 and there's a bit of a mismatch when it comes to this genre as well why do i say that is because um number one it is an fps number two although i think it's trying to be an rpg it's definitely not now there are weapons in the game there is gear that you can upgrade and acquire but uh, it's it's just there to service the game i would say it's you could say it does not resonate with you like it does with other rpgs so and speaking of other rpgs even if i have to pick up the example of assassin's creed again you see it had this whole franchise backing it so it's a very popular franchise to begin with first of all and you have so many other titles in the assassin's creed franchise here this was an original title which was coming out and uh, i saw this movie the other day the creator by the way and when i was watching this movie i was thinking about the immortals of avium why why was i thinking about the immortals of avium when i was watching the creator by the way if you haven't seen it fantastic movie especially the special effects given how much they've spent on it because these days studios spends hundreds of millions of dollars on special effects and they're still not able to get the special effects that the creator got. That's why, and that alone should be reason enough for you to watch the creator. When I was watching that movie, it just reminded me of, you know, how gorgeous the movie looked. And that's exactly what's here. I mean, the, the level design is absolutely insane. It's breathtakingly gorgeous. I mean, even this puzzle type environment here, the way it's designed, it's 
mind boggling as to how well the levels have been designed and still you have this game which is not done well i mean that's really sad <laughs> very very sad and i can't really put a finger or i don't think even a lot of these um, market gurus can put a finger on what was the conclusive reason as to why this game failed or did i wouldn't say fail failed is the wrong word i'm sorry i take that back why did this game not do as well as the developers thought it would that's the right statement so i still can't put a finger on it if you ask me personally because it might be a numerous number of issues like for instance the technical difficulties that i spoke about the poor optimization that i spoke about even gameplay you know can be repetitive all these reasons could have led to how this game performed now obviously you know i mean when i say the lack of ori originality in the beginning it it does offer this original world by the way so what do i mean by lack of originality the lack of originality probably would be in terms of the gameplay in terms of um, you know how your powers have been designed for instance you know there's these three powers red green and blue and uh, each of them you know offer something different so even from that perspective we've seen this before i mean the jumping the hacking slashing the guarding the blocking uh the parrying the shooting all of this and that's exactly why i say you know lack of originality now you would say that all games are like that that means all games are unoriginal well not really <laughs> they still have something unique to offer here that uniqueness i would say was missing so that could have been a reason uh, i i don't know you know at this point of time i'm just surprised that this game did not do as well as it should have because i again personally believe that it should definitely have received more love than what it got because story wise although it's a brief campaign it's not very long but it's good it's not bad i mean the voice acting the character designs especially even the actors that they have taken and the likeness of the actors that they have used uh, the facial expressions are all top notch i mean the production value of this game is absolutely insane this is i could say a true triple a title and um well that's why you know i'm i'm, I'm kind of in a mix you could say now gameplay well it's great i mean like i said you know you've got the green blue and red magic and these magic types they fuel both your combat and even your storytelling because that's how you upgrade your gear and all that stuff um as far as levels go a lot of variety a lot of variety you'll find like lush jungles you'll find ancient ruins some of you know i mean these ancient ruins you've already seen in this video probably and the and that's the, again my biggest gripe with this game right i mean it shows you so much so it's like somebody bringing a candy near your mouth and then they just snatch it away you can't taste it <laughs> it's like that so although you can see everything in glorious detail all around you you can't touch it you can't explore so that exploration option is missing the immersiveness option is missing because you can't interact with anything and it feels limited so although this world itself looks big but it just feels limited in its approach and i would say its main strength of if i have to talk about the strength now is that beautiful world design the beautiful character design the voice acting the animation even the soundtrack is actually quite good and there are moments when it comes to the combat where you will have these exhilarating moments i would say uh, because enemies will come at you from all directions all angles and um, yeah there are bouts of excitement that you can actually get from this game but again all the factors that i've spoken about earlier like the optimization the technical issues the repetitive gameplay the lack of immersiveness and even the um, expansiveness of the story itself that's what pulls you back and that's what stops it from being a great game and it is not an average game definitely not now when i made a video on gotham knights for instance i called that a mediocre game and i truly was i still believe i stand by that word 
I felt that Gotham Knights was a mediocre game. Now, this is not a mediocre game because, first of all, I would give it marks just for the original world that they've created, just for that. Uh, the level design itself, you know, is beautiful. So I would give them marks for that. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, this game is definitely above mediocre. It's good, in my personal opinion, but it's not great. And all those things that I've spoken about in this video, that's what pulls it back. So, can I recommend this game to you guys? On a sale? Definitely. And that's exactly what's going on right now. You have a sale till the 10th of January on Epic Game Store, but don't buy it on Epic Game Store. It's the 2nd of Jan when I'm recording this video. So you can still buy this on sale on Steam. Or if you have an EA Play Pro subscription, I cancelled mine, by the way, because I was not using it anyway. But in case you have one, use it. It's anyways included in that subscription. But if you're looking for a deeply immersive RPG, or if you're looking at this revolutionary shooter, let me tell you that you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> because, yeah, the world is intriguing. The combat is fast-paced. For those of you who enjoy magic-based games, there's even elemental magic and all that stuff. And for these reasons, yeah, it's worth a try, especially on sale. Um, but apart from this, I would say if you go into this game with no expectation or very little expectation, then you will come out extremely satisfied. But if you go into this game with a lot of expectation, like, oh, Unreal Engine 5, I expect a lot, man, this game looks so good. So, I mean, let's talk about how I can interact with the world, with the environment, etc. And all that stuff, then, hey, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> it's not that game. Even the RPG elements, not there. So this is not, it's definitely not an RPG, like full-blown RPG in my personal opinion. So that's exactly what I feel about the Mortals of Avium. In short, if I have to record this in less than 20 minutes, the gameplay bit that is. And I didn't show you a lot of the world. I just show you this level because uh, I, I thought that this level was very intelligently designed. It's it's perplexing, it's puzzling, and uh, it's challenging at the same time. Not very challenging, but it really tickles your mind. <laughs> so, hey, I mean, that's what I feel about the Immortals of Avium. What do you think about the Immortals of Avium? I'd be very interested to find out your thoughts, your comments. So please let me know in the comment section what you think about this game. And if you're about to purchase this game, and if you do purchase this game after watching this video, come back and let me know what your experience has been like. It's on sale on Steam, and I recommend that you buy it on Steam or you play it on EA Play Pro, included in the subscription. So that's my video on Immortals of Avium. That's my take. And um, I hope I can make more videos like this where I talk about these video games that I played not in a lot of detail, but I try to give my personal opinion and I try to give you some facts about what these games are all about. Hope this has helped. Now, let's quickly head out to the outro. Okay, so Immortals of Avium, have you played it? If you have, let me know what you think about it. If you haven't played it, there's a sale going on right now on both Steam and on Epic Games Store. However, I will recommend that you buy it from Steam or if you have an EA Play Pro subscription, then it's included there and you can just enjoy this game on your EA Play Pro subscription. Now, if you are going to download this game after watching this video, I will appreciate it if you could just come back and let me know what your experience has been like. It's always great to you know talk with other fellow gamers and that's exactly what I'm trying to build here. I'm trying to build a community where we can exchange our experiences and these games, sometimes they're included in certain subscriptions like Game Pass or your PlayStation 5 subscription as well. But hey, it still takes up your storage. It still takes up your data <laughs> to download these games, that is. So is it even worth your time to download these games? Is it worth that storage space in, on your computer? What do you guys think about the Immortals of Avium? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I've already given you mine in brief. So with that said, before heading out, if you've liked the content, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button and also that bell icon in case you want to get notified with all my latest videos. Now on this particular channel, which is Babit Singh, you also have my English content on my videos list. So if you want to scroll through them, if you want to see gaming content in specific um, order, then just go over to my video list and you'll be able to see all the English content on my channel. 
Now, apart from that, I also make content in Hindi. So if you want to check out my content in Hindi, well, you're very welcome to do so. And um, I would greatly appreciate it if you could also head over to my gaming channel, which is Punchy Man Gaming, the link of which is in the description box. And hit a like, subscribe on that channel too. And also hit the bell icon on both my channels because um, every time I release a new video, you get a notification that a new video of mine has released. Also share this with your friends and family members who are into gaming because uh, that helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. And your help, your support is what keeps my channel going and growing. Now with that said, it's a wrap for this one. I'll see you lovely folks in my next video. Until that time, I'll say take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all.